Anyway. Yes. How long ago was that? A few months. In the middle of the pandemic, um, like last summer. Oh, so you were, you were doing it? I was doing it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I started a brokerage, so I, I didn't need it. <laughs> Ain't nobody here. <laughs> Nobody's live, nobody live, nobody's live. Just us. <laughs> it's just family. That's it, just us. So this tape? It is recorded. It is recorded, yeah. That's Syracuse? Uh, no, it's at a Trump guy. Oh. <laughs> Never thought I heard that name this week. <laughs> <laughs> we had enough of that name. They're catching charges for no reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They white privilege will keep them good. Yep. Catching charges. <laughs> Smoke detector that's out of here. Smoke detector? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Anybody on? Nobody. You gotta probably uh, give it a push. So one, one of the most important things is financial. I'm not saying that the other things weren't important. Mm -hmm. You know, but <laughs> one of the most important things for our community and it's life insurance money. No, is it really? Yep. <laughs> Life insurance month. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't get to that part of the training. <laughs> April is Life Insurance Month. That's crazy. How do I share this? <laughs> oh, you, you got the link? I'm gonna go live. Y'all get in, get in your stations. I'm gonna go live. No, no, once he go live, people go in there because they're gonna be like, What are you up to? No, it's, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Can I, it's coming. Can no, I mean, we're live. <laughs> You weren't running it. <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing. All right, it's, it's the push. You create the push. Yeah, people are all there. Let me know, Papa. 
<laughs> Young people coming in. Who did that? <laughs> we usually have a, a handful on Zoom, and then the room is full. All right, so we live right now. We're at the Mary Nelson Youth Center. We're sitting here with a couple of financial, shall I say, agents, advisors, uh, insurance agents, financial advisors to discuss the importance of insurance and why we need insurance. We have Mr. Ferguson and we have Ms. Ferguson. And then you have myself, who's also is an agent with the same company. And I'm looking for my audience, who is usually here live in the well to discuss very important topics in our community. Uh, but for me, this is one of the most critical topics in financial literacy and understanding insurance and how it can work for you. So uh, the Zoom is. Uh, Hopefully we got Zoom off so they'll know so they'll know exactly how to zoom in. So to get to the Zoom, <clears throat> what you have to do is go to <clears throat> it's http <clears throat> colon forward slash forward slash bit dot l y forward slash Alfonso with a capital A underscore Davis with a capital D underscore Thursday with a capital T. All right, I'll re read that again. Um, or just zoom in. <laughs> Actually, I'll zoom in on it. And this is where you go to go to the Zoom. Um, so zoom in on that to get on the Zoom, to be a part of the discussion, to ask questions uh, of our financial experts. Um, and we're going to talk to you. They're going to talk to you about the importance of life insurance. And as you can see, it says, why do we need life insurance? What is the importance of financial planning? So again, we're looking for our usual, not just our usual uh, listening areas, but we're looking for people to, to log in, um, to be a part of this discussion so that we can better plan in our community so we can be a better, uh, uh, we can be better financial stewards in our community. Um, it, you know, we know the cliches that takes place all the time in our community in terms of, you know, sudden deaths, um, early deaths, um, and all the things behind that. And I'm not going to go too much into it because, you know, we want our financial people to, to really have that discussion. Um, We've had these discussions plenty of times about the need and what's going on in our community. So again, go to the Zoom. I'm gonna give you the Zoom again. Um, you want to Zoom in? We would love for you to Zoom in. It's uh, HTTP two dots forward slash forward slash B I T dot L Y forward slash Alfonso with the capital A underscore Davis with a capital D underscore Thursday. And that's a part of the Thursday morning roundtable discussion. Uh, we're looking for you to come on and be a part of the discussion. Um, this topic is a very, very important topic, critical topic in our community. Um, and I see you logging on here on my Facebook Live, but I wanna see you log on to the website, to the Zoom, and it's free. That you don't have to put in no code. Literally, all you have to do is put this in on the Zoom um, and you will be in. So again, good morning to my people. Zoom in and be a part of this discussion so we can talk about why do we need life insurance and what is the importance of financial planning? I appreciate you all who are on. That's a great thing, but the Zoom is better. 
because then you can actually interact. You can ask questions. Um, they will entertain your questions. Um, and you can set appointments to have personal um, uh, uh, consultation. Yes, sir. Um, okay. And it's not a cost. It doesn't cost you anything to have these uh, personal consultations. It's the only thing that will cost you is your time um, and an open mind to understand the importance of financial planning and why do we need life insurance? You know, so we're here at the Mary Nelson Resource Center, the Thursday morning roundtable discussions with the Fergusons and myself. Believe it or not, this is something that I do as well. Um, but you, most of you know that. Um, so we're here to have this discussion to talk about the importance of why do we need life insurance and the importance of financial planning. So just in the room. Zoom in. Zoom in and come in. We, we have space. So if you want to pop up to the Mary Nelson Resource Center, you can come on up, come on in, um, and be a part of the discussion so that we can help educate and inform our community. Mr. Ferguson. Why do we need, why, why do folks need to be here? Folks need to be here. Like I said earlier, as we were talking, it is life insurance month. It is important for people to have life insurance in order to make sure if they die too early, they have a lump sum of money. And I'm gonna go over a few concepts that are going to let people know all the things that they can put in place in order to be well protected and how to invest. Come on into the Zoom and let's have a great discussion, guys. It's gonna be very educational for you. Ms. Ferguson. The problem with society today is that I think finances is, your finances normally rule you. Your debt rules you, and what you need to do is you need to start taking control of your finances so you are in control. And the only way to know that is to be informed of the proper way and how money works. And majority of the time, we don't know that. that we live, we live, we live, we live most of our lives. The first thing we do is we work. But the question is, has anybody taught us about anything as simple as the Rule 72? And, and I'm pretty sure majority of people don't even know what that is. And, and it's an important thing to learn because not only does it help you financially, it'll also help you when it comes to your debt and understanding how debt works and understanding how money grows. So jump on in, let's have a discussion. You guys have any questions? Let's do this. We wanna educate you. We're not trying to sell you anything. All we're doing is educating you and giving you the information you need so you can make the best financial decisions that you're gonna have. And that's how we're still it. Exactly. And that's why it's so important for us to be a part of this conversation. And what we'll probably do, or what I know we're going to do is we're going to have them again um, in, the, in the next month, month or so, because this is a very important topic. And I'm Ferguson said, we just go to work. We go to work and then we exhaust our money. Boom, we spend it out and you know we pay on things, but we have no return. We, we yield nothing for our, our, our dollars. And so it's important to have some people who have some expertise, who is willing to discuss this conversation with you for free. It doesn't cost you anything, like I said, but your time to understand the importance of why do we need life insurance and financial literacy. So again, come into the Zoom, be a part of the discussion, um, and let's talk about why we need life insurance. Let's talk about financial planning. Um, and if you want to chat, 
You can chat here, but I prefer you to go to the Zoom. And I'm gonna go back to the Zoom because that way they can they can have your questions and they can answer your questions specifically. So this is how you get to the Zoom. HTTP two dots forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash Alfonso with a capital A underscore Davis with a capital D underscore Thursday. This is the Thursday morning round table discussion. And that's all you need to do is go right there and you will be into the Zoom and we can have this discussion with you and discuss the importance of financial planning and why do we need life insurance. Now, we do have a person who was interested in life insurance um, and, and they were interested in life insurance for not just themselves, but their, um, but their, 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 their dad and, and their loved ones. So I'm gonna let him ask a question because I know you had a, you know. <clears throat> uh, my question would be, you know, uh, at what age do you think will be sufficient for someone to actually get life, uh, a life insurance policy? Because, you know, some people don't believe, you know, in getting one too early because they feel like they might be cursing themselves or being a precursor. So they'd rather, you know, wait till later on down the line. But is there a specific age that they might want to like set up a life insurance plan or anything? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Here's the thing about life insurance. What's important about life insurance, and, and life insurance is dependent on two things and that's age and health. So as soon as you, I'll say as soon as you have a, you're out of school, you've got a job, you're out here working, 21, 22, you should definitely have life insurance. Here's the definition of what life insurance is. Life insurance definition is to create an immediate state, an immediate estate in case of your untimely death. Now, an estate is a bundle of money, a pile of money. So if you die, you need a pile of money, right? In order if you if you die. Because let's say you have a let's say you have a family, you have a husband and you have a wife. I should be live. So right now if we the Mary Nelson one of those Center. let's say they're making $60,000 a piece. How much are you living on? $60,000 a piece? Yes. I'm not sure. 120 yeah. and all, and, and some more, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, if you were to pass away, you leave your wife, what goes with you? The, the half, my half. Your half, right. So if you're living on 120 and then some, and you pass away, now you're left with $60,000. If you don't have life insurance in place, what is our risk? Our risk is losing our house, losing our cars. Our kids can't get an education. The wife has got to go out and get one or two jobs. You know, who would want their, their wife to do that? Right. These are your kids. You love them, right? So you would want to take care of them, whether you're alive or you pass away. Right. So that's the Can you insurance. repeat that first part? You said, what's the purpose of life insurance? Because that was critical. And I'm sorry, I didn't have it, have it on, but that was important. Life insurance, the technical definition of life insurance is to create an immediate estate in the case of your untimely death. That means if you're young and you die before you're supposed to, right? You're 20, 30, something happens. Things can happen in life. We see things happen. And what we don't want to do, what we see a lot of times in our community and other communities, if people don't have life insurance, what are we doing? We're then go fund it. We don't want to have to do that because now we have to depend on other people to maybe to give a, to a fund to bury somebody, to try to take care of the family. If we go out and put a, a, a policy in place and somebody passes away, 
then there's a there's a there's an estate left. There's a pile of money in order to take care of care of family. And that's mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. And to answer your question, you said how young do you have to be um, for them to accept it? First thing, like he said, life insurance is based on age and your health. The younger you are, the healthier you are. The younger you are, the younger you are. You every year that goes on, you're not gonna get any younger, nor are you getting any healthier for the most part. I mean, for the most part, people kind of you know develop certain things later on. So let me just give you an example. I have a daughter who was in her 20s when she got her life insurance. And um, at the same time, I had to get life insurance a few years back because I got a different life insurance in the past. And then I had to get it again. Because there's a different age in us and because of different health, she is now paying $25 a month for her life insurance for the next 30 years. Okay. And she was rated at this thing called a preferred plus because when you get life insurance, you get rated to whether or not you're healthy or whatever and however it goes. Me, on the other hand, because I ended up having to get another life insurance at a a later age, I got rated. So my premium was way more than what it needed to be than if I had gotten it when I was 25. The one thing with certain life insurance is that you have to understand that not life insurance are all made equal. That's one thing. There are certain life insurance. There are certain life insurance that when you get it, they'll tell you, oh, you can be reinsured after the term has passed. And for the most part, you really got to look into it because I was smart enough to get life insurance when I was young, but I got a 20 year. When the 20 year passed ended, what ended up happening, they told me they now have to switch me. I was paying $25, $50 that I was paying. It ended up that they told me for me to switch back over, it was going to be $300, $400 400 a month. Mm -hmm. How are you going to go from 50 to 400? But it's because of the type of insurance that they can put towards you. It is not the appropriate life insurance. Because life insurance is the other thing. It is the most deceptive part of the financial institution. Because... They will sell you life insurance and what they really need to give you is educate you about life insurance because there's different kinds and there's a lot of different insurances out there. And you really have to make sure that life insurance is really just there to protect you. Just like when you're getting your car, you protect your car. If you get into a car accident, you get slammed, you need your car protected. If it's an old bucket, all you want to do is get, what do you call that? Um, Liability. Liability. Okay, you don't need all this other stuff. If you have a brand new car, then you need a better one that has the collision and everything else. Life insurance kind of almost works the same way. You have to get the correct type of insurance for you so that you are protected at the time that you need protection. Because you don't need protection for the rest of your life. That's another thing that people is a misconception on life insurance. Life insurance is not about protecting you for the rest of your life. Because for the most part, why do you want to? Why does? Why did your dad want to get life insurance? I want to get life insurance for him. I mean, for the simple fact that he is. Yeah, I don't. He's uh, he's about seventy five years old. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel like it's necessary for him to have life insurance for the protection of you know his assets for everything. You know that that's left after you know the funeral costs and everything like right, that. Right, it's the right. purpose yeah. to, to to take care of the bill, not for the bill to be left behind. You know, right. and that's yeah. not the bill to do anything. Mm-hmm. And then we can talk about your specific, you know, you know, situation, you know, because there's a lot of rules out there. And then, you know, New York State is very regulated. That's the one thing, too. New York State is very different than the rest of the country. Um, uh, life insurance in New York State is very difficult. Life insurance really needs to be sold as life insurance. Life in New York State. Okay. Right. And that's what it is. We'll talk about and then <laughs> those are the things that, you know, and these are the things and the questions and stuff that people really need to be asking. Not, like I said, not every life insurance is made equal. Not every life insurance is honest. Not every life insurance is the appropriate life insurance for you. So you're really, you know, and that's something that we need to talk about. There's a purpose for life insurance. And the only way to do that is to explain it to people, educate people and have a conversation. Can you explain again that piece? Because I think it's really critical. You touched on it about healthy and age. Mm-hmm. 
the, the, the critical piece of that determines what? How much you pay, how much yep. you don't pay. Explain that again, because so, that's really important. So your premium is based on two things. Your premium, which is what you pay on a monthly basis, on your age and your, and your health. That's really what it's based on. So if you have your own personal life insurance, it's really based on two things, your health and your age. So the earlier you are, the, to get it, the better it is for you because you are going to get locked in at a certain you know at a certain rate that's what you're going to need, and that's what you're going to end up paying for for a longer period for of time the of you. for the duration of the time. Like I said, somebody like me who ended up developing other things like medical stuff, I ended up having to pay because I had to pay at my age, which is I don't know in my forties. With now they're considering all my medical and I already had ailments and other things. And, you know, I'm not as small as what I was when I was in my 20s. Not so, a spring chicken no so now we're talking about now there's other things called BMI that is now in mm -hmm. place and which is another crazy thing that they put in place. Explain High that pressure. BMI. BMI is a, they, what you call a standard of a ratio between um, the height and the weight of a person. Unfortunately, um, it's what a lot of people use, especially in the medical field. Um, cause by the way, I'm a nurse. So, uh, we use that all the time on the basis of a lot of things, but they don't really, it doesn't really, really explain like how healthy you are because there are people that are what you call six foot two and 200 and some pounds and there it, it, it's, it's, it's all about proportionate and that's, but unfortunately the BMI chart is really specific. It's really just black and white. You follow it and then they call you either ideal weight, moderate weight, slightly obese, and to the obese to, you know, to all that other stuff. And that unfortunately is, in, you know, is, is part of it. And they actually take that in consideration when they do, when they do your, your, uh, your, your uh, assessment for you to get uh, life insurance. So yeah, that's that's does that answer important. your question? Yes, it okay. did. So so long story short, for anybody out there, you know, I'm gonna just throw this out there. Anybody that know any any knuckleheads, you got any knuckleheads in your family that that, that you know is known for being rough out here in these streets, try to talk to them and get a life insurance policy, try to save their life, or try to try to make it a little bit easier for their family. You know, especially if you cannot talk to them per se and get them to get a grip on themselves on, on reality. Try to try to get them to smarten up and get them a life insurance policy. You know, because it, it'll help their family on the long run. This, just the life they choose to live. You know, be smart about your future. And most of these kids have a job, even if it's a small job. Think about it. They spend more tw more than twenty five dollars a month on other stuff. Absolutely. And this bill is going to be something that is actually going to put give something back to your family if something happens. Because let me tell you, if you have a NIMO bill, NIMO ain't giving your family nothing for free if you don't keep paying for it. This one will pay you if something happens to you <laughs> and protect you and have your family have a chance to actually mourn somebody because now they have some, they, money is not something that they have to worry about. Because it's devastating enough to lose a person. It's more devastating than have to lose a person and have that not have a chance to mourn because they got to go to work because they got to pay the house. Right. They got to take the kids to school and got to do all that. Right. So. I agree. So I, I, I heard you guys explain term life. So what about whole life? I'm going to explain that right now. I'm going to get into that right now. Great question. As she said, there are different types of insurance. So now let's, let's explain the different types of insurance. Now, I gave you the definition of what life insurance is. Life insurance, again, definition, textbook, textbook definition is to create an immediate estate in the event of your untimely death. So with that definition, if, meaning estate means boatload of money. So with that definition, let's say this happens. Let's say you have a boatload of money, correct? And you die when you're supposed to. You're 80, 90 years old. In, the, in that case, 
do we need life insurance? No, we don't. So if that's the case, why do we have insurance for our whole life? So now let's talk about the different ins insurances that they have. I want you to pay close attention to this. This is very critical, ladies and gentlemen, very critical. Let's take a look at whole life. In whole life, we're paying for two things. We have what's called the death benefit and we have what's called cash value. Now, we, some people have insurance because it's sold to them like this to have a savings account, money for the kids. In life insurance, that is not the true definition of life insurance, but it is sold like that. You asked about whole life. That's what do you cool. know about whole life? Oh, I, I know about whole life. Right, I know. So if you tell, I mean, what do you, why are you, I mean, that No, no, I just wanted, I heard you talking about death benefit, Correct. but I didn't hear you talking about, you know, this building of the uh -huh. asset. So yeah. let's put some numbers to this. Let's say we got a 50, 50K death benefit, right? We're paying $100 a month, and we got 10K in the cash value. Okay, now let's say it's time, since it, a lot of times it's sold to you like this as a savings account. Something to, you know, something to build e equity. Let's say it's time for your kids to go to school and you want to go and get some of this 10K out, right? Now, whose money is the 10K? It's your money. So here's what happens. You have $50,000 in a debt benefit. $100 a month, 10K. So now, if you wanted to get into some of this 10K, how will they send it to you? How do you think you're going to get it? It's a loan. So they loan your own money? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So why would you want an account that they loan you your own, loan, yeah. your own money? And if it's a loan, you have to pay, pay what? Interest. Interest. interest on it. That's right. Yeah. You got to Four to eight percent interest on highway your rivalry. own money. That's how we have it. Who gets the interest? And who's the interest going back to? The bank, yeah. The insurance company. It's not like yeah. you yeah. paying back your 401k, yeah. you know, where the interest goes to you. They get it. Another thing. Let's say you pass away, right? Again, $10,000 in the cash value, 50 in the 50,000 in the death benefit. How much money? Are you going to get, or should you get? Well, one would think you would get sixty thousand. You're going to get fifty k. Going to get the death benefit. What happens to the ten k? They got it. They keep it. They got. It. They keep it in their. They they put it in their and own they, pocket. They do, and they make you pay interest on it. Well, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. no they don't make you pay interest on it. Okay. They just keep the money. Yeah. That money, that's your money. So whose money is this really? Your money. What is their money? It's their it's money. Their. Right. It's, it's their money. money. Okay, let's say you get smart and say, okay, I know how to beat them. I'll borrow this 10K out and then I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Try to outsmart them. 
But here's what happens if you do that, right? They're going to subtract the 10K from the 50K plus, all the interest. plus any interest yeah. that you owe for not paying back the loan. It's still getting it. That sounds more like a loan shark right there, like a like Shug Knight or something. Like. <laughs> it's illegal. But I don't believe it's ethical. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so like that. So the thing about this life insurance is you pay for two things, but come home for just one. Just one. Uh, for just one. It's either one or the other. Let's just say you outlive it and you, you know, the insurance is up to age 95, right? And you outlive it. Let's just say the $10,000 was there and you're at now 95 and now you can cash it out. What do you think you're going to get when you, when it's time, because you outlived it, what you're going to get? Is the ten grand? Because it cancels out. Because this one cancels out. And it makes the policy non void. Yeah, and plus at the end of the day, all this money that you paid because you've reached ninety five has now basically like fully funded the whole entire thing, and you don't get none of it. It's all about okay. It's, it, it's like going it's like going to a shoe store, okay, and buying a pair of shoes and then coming home with one shoe. That is exactly how this works. You can't wear it, right? In, you know, you can't really wear it. I mean, but for some people, they're very attracted to the fact that they're protected for life. And they're protected for, for, for the whole of their life. And another thing about this insurance is that majority of people, the reason why they get life insurance is because they want to leave money for their kids. That's one thing. When you're 80, how old are your kids? They grown too. Right That's here. right. So... Why would you have to really do that? And, and, and so that's really the premise of what we believe in, because this is a type of insurance that's out there. And in, I'm telling you, this is sold. Majority of the people that have life insurance have this life insurance. Because this is what they're sold, because they're given the option and told them that you're going to have money built into the whole thing that you can use for a house, you can use for this, you can use for all the stuff. And giving you that, 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 you know, that shining diamond in your hand. But what you don't understand is like what you mentioned that when we were talking about term insurance, we do this thing called term, buy term and invest the rest. So buy term and invest the rest. Because if you do your investing separately from where this is, this money is going to be worth more in 30 years than what the 10 grand that they're going to give you. So let me explain what term in term insurance. Our company believes, our company believes, and by term, as she said, and invest the difference. This company was started for that purpose, to, to go against this ideal of whole life insurance being what people needed. So let's talk about term, because term can be confusing too. There's some things in term that are not great either. So let me go back to whole life real quick. There's different types of whole life. There's whole life. There's universal life. There's variable life. There's flexible life. And the longer the name, the more confusing it is. And the more, and the more components to it that there is. So let's talk about what we believe in here. But there's different types of terms, so let's talk about it. So here what we have is called annual renewable term. And how this works is the death, the death, death benefit stays the same, but the premium goes up every year as we talked about as you get older you become more of a risk to the company so the death benefit goes up so a life insurance agent a lot of times a life insurance agent that sells whole life and they get a person that want terms will sell them this right and as this goes up they'll try to convert them back to this I don't think that's any good. Then what we have 
it is a credit mortgage life insurance. And that is the premium stays the same, but the death, the coverage goes down. So when you pass away, your house is paid off. It's good to have a paid off house. But can we go to the store with life insurance? No. So you can at least in that in that case, you don't get anything. Your house is just paid off. Right. You know? So what we believe in here at Primerica is again by term invested in difference. The death benefit stays the same. It's called level term. Death benefit stays the same. And the premium stays the same. As she told you, our daughter has life insurance. Her premium stays the same for the for the duration of, 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 uh, of the policy. It's not going up and down, you know? So this is what we believe in when it comes to life insurance. Buy term and invest the difference. We believe to save to invest, invest to save life insurance to cover the risks and to protect. Any more questions out there? Any more questions? Because this is an important topic and I just wanna chime in because as an agent as well, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up here because uh, what the Ferguson's pointed out and I, I I got my mask just so you know we are practicing uh, social distance safety. I got my mask, but I don't. I'm not going to have my mask on when I'm talking um, because this is very important. What Vic talked about when he talked about buying term and investing the rest. You know, if you come see me, I'm going to sell you. Uh, uh, I'm going to introduce you to term because I'm not selling you anything. You're, you're creating a legacy for yourself and your family. So we're going to talk about term and then I'm going to send you to Miss Ferguson and we, she's going to talk to you about taking that other money that you would probably spend over here and putting that into an investment that's going to yield some growth and some dividend over time. And there's different investments, you know, um, uh, uh, high risk investments, low risk investments. She'll have that discussion with you. But what I'm going to talk to you about is securing so say you come to me in year 40 you just bought a house and your house is $150,000 $160,000 I'm going to talk to you about making sure that if, if anything happened to you between the time you're 40 and 60 that that mortgage you're going to take out enough insurance uh term insurance that that mortgage will be covered and any other bills that you may have accumulated over that time will be protected so for you, if you got your spouse and your kids, if you got kids at a certain age, we could put them on the policy as a writer. And that's really almost free, basically, because you're really not paying that much for them to be on as a writer. We're going to cover those assets so that you don't leave your spouse with a ton of debt or in a situation where now they're going to lose the house because you count when you had two incomes. Now you go on to one income. And so we're gonna, I will talk to you specifically about that aspect of it. Um, and because I'm, I don't quite, I don't have my, my, my 663s yet, she does. I will then refer you to her to talk about how do you take that other money and invest it, invest it in ways that's going to grow for you and work for you over your lifetime to help you build money. But I want to go back to something that they both spoke, spoke about and the question that um, the young man had asked is that when you get life insurance, if you don't have life insurance, 90% of the people in our community here in the city of Syracuse um, who don't have life insurance, you'll see them put up a GoFundMe page. That GoFundMe page is to try to bury their loved the average funeral ranges anywhere between four to ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars, that's a pretty nice funeral. You got some people who spend fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a funeral 
that's a, that's a very lavish funeral. Um, but the average funeral will, will range anywhere between four to ten thousand dollars. If you don't have a policy, say a fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollar policy, a twenty thousand dollar policy to to take care of that, then you got to do a GoFundMe. But if you come see me, you come see Mr. Ferguson or Ms. Ferguson, we're going to talk to you about getting you a small policy that is going to take care of those expenses so that you don't have to do a GoFundMe page. And you, at the end of the day, you may have some residual left over after you bury them or your loved one to kind of do a little something with that money or give Ms. Ferguson a call and say, OK, I got $15,000 left. You know, where could I put that and how can I make that grow? And then she will talk to you about taking that money and putting it in specific accounts. And I'll let her get up and speak about that. That's going to allow your money to work for you. But at the end of the day, the most critical thing that we need to understand is that we have to protect our whole life. How do you protect your whole life? And what I mean by your whole life, your, your entire existence. And if you don't have insurance in place, then your entire existence isn't being protected. Your assets aren't being protected, particularly your home. Um, you know, she mentioned car. You don't need life insurance to protect your car because you, no. you automobile yeah. insurance. That those are different things. We don't do property and casualty, no. but we can refer you to people that we know that do property and casualty. What we're talking about is protecting you and your assets and your home and your children. So, if I had a client and I sold them a policy, Ms. Ferguson, and they passed away and the policy say was for $50,000. They did a funeral, cost them $10,000 and they wanted to take that $40,000. I would send them to you. Then what type of discussion will you have with that client? That's a whole, that's a whole, a lot of discussion. First of all, we have to figure out, no. First, first of all, what we have to do is we have to really sit down and figure out where they're at and what they have in place at this point in time. It's not just about the dollars and the cents and all that stuff. Because here's the thing, the way we deal with money is all about the strategy. The one thing that we are not taught and people that have a lot of money are taught is all about the strategy of where the money goes. And that's the one thing that we don't know. And like I said, I, I don't know if anybody remember, but I, as I said, I was, I'm a nurse. And I'm still a nurse. So I'm very educated, but I didn't know anything about money. And I didn't know anything about money. And a lot of it is because of just information that I get. I, I was misinformed, one. And I was uninformed in a lot of things. So for us to find out where you have to go, you really have to know where you're starting from. Um, you really have to know where you're starting from. So you really have to know where you're starting from. So I'm not just going to sit here and tell you, oh, you can put your 15,000 here, there, and there, and there. No, it's that it's not that easy. And if somebody just tells you because they're an investment advisor and tells you, oh, you can put your money here, all they want is whatever money that they're going to get when you invest your money. Okay? That's not how I work. And that's not how we work as an organization. Our organization does not work like that. What we want to do is we put, we want to put you in place and educate you. And that's why when we do um, this thing called a financial needs analysis, when we sit down with you, that is complimentary. And what we do is we sit down with you, we explain to you how money works, how, you know, what, where your money needs to go and how you need to split it up. Um, and then afterwards, if you, you can do one or two things. One, you can come work with us and let us work with you and we'll do a full financial needs analysis or two, you don't want to work with us, but at least we've gave you enough nuggets that nobody can actually take advantage of you if you hear it again. And I think it's important enough. And I think even those little nuggets is important, but what really people need to know is they really need to know how everything works together with a strategy in place. Because that is one of the biggest problem right here is about the strategy and where the money goes. Like even people that work, a lot of people that work, they have 401ks, they have IRAs, they have all that stuff. 
And there's two, one of the things that they have is, and I was one of them. I was retirement rich, but cash poor. Mm, explain that. Retirement rich and cash poor is when I had all my money in my retirement plan. But when I needed money, I had nothing to pull from. Mm. So that's not a good place for you to be. Because what ended up happening to me personally is I ended up borrowing money from my 401k. Now, granted, I paid it back and I paid myself interest. But what people don't understand is that once I took the money out, I lost that compounding interest that I would have had that accumulated for that amount of time. So that's really not the greatest thing to do. And that is one of the bigger issues there is to it. So for you to have a financial, you have to have specific accounts. You have, a, you have an account to protect another account to protect another account. So, and like I said, it's all about the strategy. Your retirement money, should be your retirement money. You cannot touch it until you're 59 and a half. And if you think you need to touch it, then you, you're missing something in the whole, whole entire thing. You're missing something in the whole entire thing because what's happening is you're gonna do exactly the same mistake I did. I was borrowing money from myself and paying it back. But at the same time, I lost the compounding interest that would have increased my, my investments at a higher level. If I had this thing called an emergency fund, which people have, I mean, people know about it, but they don't do it. And an emergency fund is cash on hand that you can pull from. It's oops money. That's exactly what it is. It's oops money. Oops, my car broke down. Now I need to pay $1,200 for a new whatever it is that I have to do. Oops, my dog ate something and now I have to put, take him to a vet and pay $1,500 to get them stomach bumps. Oop, the roof fell off and now I need $10,000 to pay. That's the kind of oops money that I think is very important, especially for homeowners. Because people always say that your home is your biggest asset. It's not. Your home is really not the biggest asset you have. Because here's the thing, your home doesn't make you any money, does it? Mm -hmm. The plumbing goes down, what happens? You got to get it fixed. You got to pay for it. So, you know, some, the roof breaks down, what do you got to do? You got to get care. it fixed. So to me, an asset is something that actually creates something for you and makes money for you. Now, eventually, when you sell the home, that's a different story. But you cannot get that in five minutes. What you need is something that you can pull from right away. So now you don't need to touch anything else that you shouldn't be touching. And that's where really the strategy has to work. So if someone wanted to sit down with you, how would they reach you? Um, this is how you would reach us. I'm gonna give you a phone number where you can reach us. Write it on the board too. Yeah. You can reach him and he'll find me. <laughs> We live in the same house, so that's okay. Anybody can see that? That's 315 area code 928-0255. Repeat that again. 315-928-0255. Now, since we're talking about, now we've moved over to talk about investing. There's a couple of things, there's a couple of concepts that we must, we must show you in order for you to understand what we mean about investing. As she talked about, she talked about compounding interest. Now, I don't know how many people have heard about the rule of 72. Anybody in here heard of the rule of 72 before? No, you have. I believe. No, I'm, I'm thinking of something different. I have. <laughs> So one person in here said heard, heard about it. And that's typical. Most people have not heard of the rule of 72. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. But first, I'm going to show you one thing else. Now, as we go through life and we're earning money, bringing money in and money going out, what we have to do, we have to build a well-built financial house. Don't leave it. Just draw underneath it. As I said, we have to have a well-built financial house. 
Now, I don't know who's built the house before. Anybody built the house before? Yeah. You built a house before? Yeah. So what is the most important thing of your house? The foundation. Exactly. The foundation. The foundation of your financial house is, as we talked about, income protection. Okay. Now, as we build a financial house, we have to build it in order. You can't put the wiring in before you frame the house, right? That wouldn't make sense. So the next thing that she talked about is an emergency fund. And that is three to six months of your income saved up if anything was to happen. Right. I mean, look what happened to COVID. A lot of us lost jobs. Ended up got furloughed or not working, and the question is, how did people feel about that? Did they have money stashed away to use while they're at? I mean, granted, you know, unemployment with the extra money and stuff, you know, it, it helped. But if that was not there, how would you have survived? That is absolutely correct. This coronavirus, this this, this pandemic has made people look at their finance and, and see finance probably as being more important nowadays. You know, being out of work. I think people realize that you definitely need this emergency fund. You know, that if you're out of work and you can't work, you have some money to pull from, three to six months or more. So to continue to build our financial house, what we need next is a debt elimination plan. Now, will you people out there agree that debt is a problem in America? Student loans are out of control. Credit card debt, the average person has $15,000 in credit card debt. New York State, it's even more, probably $16,000, $17,000 of debt. So debt eats away at anything we can begin to put away because we're paying it out we're not keeping it for ourselves or we're not keeping it to work for ourselves. Next is savings and investments. And this is not short term, this is long term, over time. We're talking about 25, 30, 40 years to grow money. The important thing about investing is investing over time. It's not about trying to time the market because nobody can do that. That would be insider trading, so you can't do that. <laughs> you go to jail. People go to jail for that. So what you do, you put money in and you contribute to it over time. Just say, just imagine if you could contribute a hundred, two hundred, fifty dollars a month, even forty dollars a month. We start as low as $25 that you can begin to invest. And that's what we're talking about starting when you're young. Same thing we were talking about with life insurance. Starting when you're young to put some money away and that you become disciplined in saving some money for yourself, paying in yourself first. Next and last is fun and games. Now, most people build their house from the roof up and that's why it's not working for them. That's why, they're, that's why we're in disaster. Start with fun and games. Because so when you say from games. the roof up, what do you mean? <laughs> they're start, most people don't do these things, but they all, most of us all do this. Mm. We have fun and games, you know what I'm saying? We spend money on this kind of stuff, but we have none of this in place. Now, if you were building a house and you walked on your site and they were building the roof, what would you say? Where's the foundation? You're firing some people, right? <laughs> right. right? The house will never stand. So it won't stand. So we have to build it in order and in order for us, for it to work for us. Okay? Now I want to show you a concept. This will be the last concept I'll show you, but this will be one of the most 
important concepts of the day. Now, she talked about compounding interest. I'm going to show you how compounding interest works. How many people have heard of the rule of 72? Rule of 72 is one of the most important concepts in finance. It's fifth grade math, but it's never been taught. Anybody heard of Rule of 72? I heard of it. I was, it was on YouTube. I was watching a video where a guy was explaining it in regards to investing. He was talking about save a certain amount of money, put a certain amount of money aside, or use a certain number when breaking it down so you know what portion to put where. I'm going to show you how powerful this rule is. It was actually 21 Savage. It was a rapper that, that actually came out to the rule of 72. Yeah, so. Okay, I'm going to give away a little money this, this morning. What's your name, man? Hope. Hope. Okay, I'm going to give away two, two grand. Put me on the phone. <laughs> Hope. Put me up there. Okay. One <laughs> second. So now, Hope gets his $2,000, right? And he says, I really don't know what to do with it. I'm scared. So I'm going to put it in a savings account. You know? Hope would never say that. <laughs> Just for illustration. <laughs> so we're at the bank. He puts his money in a savings account. And we're going to get 3%. And that's just for calculating okay. purposes, because yep. that's not what happens. <laughs> Nobody makes three percent. Right. We're not making three percent at the bank, but just for calculating, to just to make it simple, so you can understand three percent. So now, the rule of seventy-two says that you take the interest rate and divide it into seventy-two, and it'll tell you how many years it'll take for your money to double. So three goes into 72, how many times? 24. So it'll take 24 years at 3% for your money to double. So in 24 years, how much money would Hope have? To what? 2,000, we got what? 4,000. 4,000, 4, right? Now, if he want his money to double again, how many more years will it take? 24 years. 24 years, right? So 48. How much money will we have now? 8,000. 8,000. 8, Good luck, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to get a couple hamburgers. <laughs> but we're not going to go too far with $8,000, right? What's your name, man? Joe Quinn. Joe. So now, Joe is going to put his money in a, he says, I'll put my money in a CD. You know what a CD is? A certificate of deposit. Or depreciation. Or really a depreciation. <laughs> <laughs> now. Let me ask you this. Does anybody know what the inflation rate is? The inflation rate. Nobody is usually three and a half percent. If a CD is getting 6%, is the growth on a CD taxable? Yes. It is. So if this inflation rate is three and a half and the whole 6% is taxable, how much money money are you really making? Less than half or? Right, you're not making much. Right. So now, Joe's at 6%. Now, I double the interest rate. What's going to be our bottom line? If you double it, I double the interest rate. You got eight thousand here. What's going to happen? It's a double, right? It's a double. Let's take a look at it. So we got two K here too, right? So six goes into seventy-two. How many times? Twelve. So. At 12 years, what do we have? 4,000. 4, 4, How many more years is it going to take for our money to, to, to grow? Another 12. 12 years, right? Okay. 
So that's 24. We got eight, right? How much more? How much long now? 36, right? We got 16 and 48. Look at that. We got 32,000. So our money, Joe, didn't, your money didn't double, right? Versus Hope's 8,000, what did it do? It quadrupled. That's the power of compound. All right, Alfonso. Alfonso says, I'm not scared. I'm going to take my money and put it in mutual funds. Mutual funds is a pool of money, a pool of companies professionally managed where you put your money to not have too much risk it's versus having it in one stock. You put it in mutual funds, which are have different sectors inside of it, which diminishes your risk of losing all your money at one time. So Alfonso says, I'm gonna put my money in mutual funds. So 12 goes into 72 how many times? Six times. So Fonzo has a few more doubling periods, don't it? That doesn't. So let, let's see, see, let's see where we go now. Two thousand goes to what? Four. Four. Four thousand. Eight. Twelve. Eight. Sixteen. Thirty-two. Sixty-four. One twenty-eight. Two fifty-six. And look at this. Five hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Isn't that, isn't that amazing what compounding interest could do? Isn't it? Yeah. So now, let's, let's take a look at this. We started with the same amount of money, right? Two grand each. Same amount of years. Joe, who was controlling your money and hopes? I mean, it clearly wasn't us. The bank. What was the bank doing with the money? They were holding on to it. They were investing. They're investing. They're putting it in the market too. They're in mutual funds. So that's how compounding interest works. Again, if you want to get in touch with us, 315-928-0255. And we can sit down on an individual basis, take your personal situation, put your personal numbers, and it'll tell us where you're at. And we can help you get to where you wanna go. And what's the name of the company? 